It was just one year ago that General Motors filed for bankruptcy and turned over majority ownership to the U.S. Treasury. But 12 months later, the company's market share is stabilized, its sales are up, and it's turning a profit. I'm Carl Brower, Editor-at-Large at Edmunds.com, and I'm here with our CEO, Jeremy Enwell, our Senior Analyst, Jessica Caldwell, and on the phone joining us from Detroit is our Senior Editor, Michelle Krebs. We're going to take a look at GM 12 months after bankruptcy and see where they're at. Now, what stands out for you one year on? Well, I think what's most notable, let's go back 12 months ago to what everybody was saying. And, and everybody, I mean, everybody was basically forecasting that GM could never go bankrupt, that the company would not survive, consumers would not buy cars from a, from a bankrupt car company. And I think perhaps uh, we were all asking the wrong question because what we missed was that this was one of the most unusual bankruptcies in U.S. history. This was a government-supported, government-backed bankruptcy. And in many ways, uh, I think uh, the the uh, positive examples uh, of progress that GM's made that, uh, that you've been sort of reciting would not have happened without that level of government support. So what really occurs to me, you know, they re reported a profit. Uh, I think as car, as car sales continue to recover, they could actually start to be producing very significant profits, and perhaps it's not uh, completely infeasible after all that the U.S. taxpayer will start to get some of that investment back. What do you think, Jessica? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I definitely agree with Jeremy. And, and looking back over the past year, you, you kind of see their progression and what happened a year ago when they declared bankruptcy and incentives were going crazy and inventory was super high, days to turn, they couldn't get those cars off the lot. And now we here, here we are today, incentives are in place, inventory is definitely in place, and they're not taking as long to sell these cars, which is really the key for them. I mean, they have to sell cars to, to continue. Yeah, the days to turn is really down for them. You know, one of the things that really popped out through that bankruptcy, and we saw it with Chrysler as well, is that consumers, maybe it's because of the economic distress that consumers were feeling, but they actually, the deal seekers actually sought out companies that were in bankruptcy. Sales actually went up, profits actually went up during the bankruptcy process, and who would have thought that? Right. I mean, we saw, and consumers weren't getting a great deal in bankruptcy. It wasn't until it was until the fall when the inventories were high, GM realized, gosh, we have a lot of 2009 models. We've got to get them off the showroom. And that's when the deal started, not during bankruptcy. It's one of the great truths of the car industry is that a great deal is what the consumer thinks it is, not actually what they're paying. I look yeah. at this as an incredible opportunity for GM going forward. I mean, imagine as an individual, if someone just came in and wiped out your debt and you kept earning the same money that you did and you, did, you only had new bills to pay, not the old ones. So for me, it's just looking at how is GM going to maximize uh, this incredible uh, second chance that it's been given. And it won't be easy because the competition is really stiff, not... Uh, not standing still by any stretch. Uh, they have to keep on turning out some great products and uh, uh, ones that people are willing to pay a premium for. So a uh, tough road going ahead, but uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for GM. Well, I think you're right. I mean, going forward, the key has got to be great products. And they're lucky because, uh, I mean, they're not lucky. They've done some hard work. The last year has shown a lot of good product hit the marketplace. Yeah. And when you think about the fact that these products weren't produced in the last year, a lot of the current management would love to take credit for that. These products were in the pipeline three to five years ago, and they would have never seen the light of day without the government helped, uh, you know, backing of a bankruptcy. So I think we're seeing cars that would have never been out there, and it's great that the GM already had a handle on its product. Now it's got to get a, a handle on its expenses and its costs. But as Michelle said, it's got every advantage at this point. Yeah. Yeah, and what's good is each product is successful. It's not just a hit or miss. It seems like with each successive product launch, There's they're having some success and consistency. Hard thing to do in this business. Yeah. yeah. The other thing that I think in terms of consistency is what General Motors needs going forward is really strong leadership with some stability. As you know, there's been a revolving door of executive changes in the past year and consistency of purpose. Uh, they need to set a direction and stick with it. I'm sure they're very tired of hearing the comparison of GM uh, to Ford, but what Alan Mulally has done at Ford is exactly what GM needs to emulate. There needs to be a clear direction, uh, people need to be a accountable, and they need to stay a course. Clearly the last 12 months have been critical for General Motors, but the next 12 will be even more so. And we're going to be following this on Auto Observer with an ongoing look at General Motors one year after bankruptcy. I want to thank Jeremy, Jessica, and Michelle for joining us, and please see AutoObserver.com for more details.